Podcasters. Welcome to Eco SY. Today we're continuing our Women in Industry series and we're going to be talking about industry and families. And I'm very excited to have with us Mary Bruce Clemens from TW Controls. And I know you all remember Mary Bruce from the wonderful episode she was on. We have Linda Freeman, who is back from Rockwood All Nation. So welcome, Linda. And we have a newcomer. We have Taylor Smith, who is from Onyx. And Taylor, Ashley Walters speaks the world of you. So I'm so excited to, to have you on the, as, as part of the panel today. So welcome, ladies. Hope everyone's doing well. And maybe let's just jump in about what are your individual family constructs? What do they look like? And Linda, why don't you kick us off there? Thanks, Chris. I'm so excited to talk about this because I, I think the neatest thing is that the definition of family has really changed. And if I look back in like my parents' generation, what family was, was a man that married a woman and then had a child. Um, but in today's world, that's really different. Um, I'm part of what's called the sandwich generation, where people are taking care of their kids, but then also taking care of their parents. Um, so, so my personal family is I never had um, children that I birthed, um, but I married a man that has three kids. And so I have three bonus kids. Um, but they don't live in the same state with me, so I, I don't get an opportunity to interact with them as much. But the person that I care for on a daily basis is my mom. She's in her mid-80s, and she's got health problems, and I became her guardian and her conservator, and so I have legal and financial responsibility for her. And so when I compare the things I have to do on a daily basis to like someone that has a child they take care of, a lot of what I do is is similar to that, but sometimes it's it's even more. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's what my family looks like. It's it's me and my mom and my husband and my three bonus kids. I love it. I love it. How about you, Taylor? Okay, so I'm pretty young. I'm 23, and I just joined the industry about two years ago. It was just my anniversary here at Onyx. Um, so when I lived at home in Pittsburgh, my family was me, my mom, my dad, my grandmother, my uncles. And when I was 17, I decided to move to Brooklyn to go to school on a bowling scholarship. That's when I kind of separated from my family and I got to see them maybe two or three times a year. And from there, um, my Brooklyn teammates, my coach, they all became my family. And when I got the job opportunity here at Onyx and I took it, I came here knowing absolutely nobody but Ashley. I had met her one time and I accepted the job and came here. So really, since I moved here, my family construct would be my Onyx family and my significant other and my dog. Okay. And we're going to have to dig into a hero episode with you, Taylor, and talk about that bowling. I, I got to learn more on that one. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that. How about you, Mary Bruce? Uh, I am a, a human individual, um, but I do have siblings and nephews and nieces. Um, I've got some elder care part of that sandwich generation as well. A lot of decisions about my family have been made on having a career and not having a whole lot of support and watching people struggle through that and trying to choose a route that uh, was going to make me able to help other people. And so I'm excited to do this episode because it has a lot to do with how I've chosen to go, not necessarily how I've wanted to go. Let's stick on that then, Mary Bruce. What you know, when you saw the title and the the topic, what 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 made you excited? What jumped out at you? A lot of uh, growing up as an adolescent, I had to do with uh, being available for drop offs, pickups, uh, in between different types of career paths. Those conversations, but um, the majority of my adult working experience has been how can I make enough money to survive. Um, how could I possibly fund a family with the careers that I've had? How do I, and so changing into a different career field, how do you get support? How do you get childcare? You can't, these things are not accessible. And so a lot of us are not having kids. We're not getting married because we have to be able to move at a moment's notice. We can't just pull kids out of school and do that stuff. So it's, it's a very important topic because it's changed a lot about how family systems are. Families look different now because they have to, it's almost dictated by work that it's had to shift how families look. Uh, and I think that that's an important thing to discuss along with all of the topics that, that we're gonna kind of review today. 
on how we can change that so that we can have the families we want. To Absolutely. And be available to them. For sure. For sure. You know, Linda, when, when you saw it, what, what jumped out at you? I'm curious what, what sparked your interest in here? I've seen, I've been in industry, so I'm on the opposite spectrum. Mm -hmm. I've been in the industry a long time, over 25 years. And when I look back 10, 20 years ago versus just the few things that have happened since COVID and, and COVID had a huge impact upon women. You know, we've had the largest amount of women leaving the workforce because the caregiving of children typically goes to women. So when everyone was stuck at home with their kids, um, you know, how did that impact women and what did employers do? And some employers stepped up and some of them didn't. And so what I was excited to share about today is, is I'm just really fortunate that I worked for an employer that stepped up and there's some best practices and some things that we did that I would love to share and hopefully inspire some other companies. Uh, you know, we're a real big company, so we have a lot of resources, but you can translate these things to smaller companies as well. You know, it's not just a big corporation thing. So that's what made me excited about it. And then I like the fact that, again, that typical family is a man and a woman married with a child, but that's not who you picked for this panel. Right. You know, you, you really picked people that represent what families look like today. So that's why I'm excited to, to be here. Going off of what Linda said, I'm very excited because I get to learn from you guys and in the same sense, um, we're not a very big company, but we also, in my opinion, stepped up and really provided for our people during COVID. So I feel like we're going to have a really good conversation. I think so. I think so. And, and you, you all have mentioned, you know, there's some headwinds out there, you know, that, that have been existing it for a while. And Linda's encouraging to hear the things that, you know, are, are starting to change at the Rockwall automation front. That's really cool. I'm anxious to hear on some of that. But when you think about some of those biggest headwinds that women have had working in industry regarding their families, what jumps out? And, and Taylor, do you want to kick us off on that one? I really think that part of it would be the need for childcare. Mm -hmm. So especially during COVID, I know so many schools were shut down and people were still expected to go to work, but they didn't have anyone to care for their children. And at that point with the virus going around, I feel like you didn't just want to send your kids to other people and you were the one who wanted to be there and care for your kids. So I know our company really stepped up. They allowed remote work, not even just remote work, but very flexible schedules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was a big, it was a big one. I mean, that was a major headwind because I mean, all of a sudden everywhere that, that you would take your kids traditionally during the day, that was gone. I mean, we, and it, it, it impacted our family too. Like, okay, this just got real, you know? So it, was, it had a, a lot of conversations and, def and depending on the family construct, that definitely, that conversation was different in different ways. So, um, you know, how about you, Linda, any thoughts on the, you know, the headwinds for, for ladies out there in industry right now? And, yeah. And I think the toughest thing was with COVID even if you had a good support system in place, if you had a good daycare, if you had grandma living nearby, those were taken away as well. I mean, you couldn't even drop your kids off at a friend's house. And so I, I watched um, some of my coworkers, they created pods. And some of my friends did this too, where they would pick three or four families and those three or four families would dedicate, okay, we're going to be a pod together. And then we're going to take turns watching each other's kids every couple of days. So we at least get a day off. But you had to have an employer, to Taylor's point, you had to have an employer that kind of stepped up and was flexible with that. Right. And if all of a sudden someone needed to change a meeting because my three-year-old just threw a tantrum, that needed to be okay. Where in the past, that wasn't okay. Right. I believe it was looked down upon in the workplace mm -hmm. if you have to take care of a kid because, or, or take care of a family member because now you're not focusing on your work. Right. And what I hope has come out of COVID is that that mindset has shifted hmm. and that in, in my company sent out an email recently, which I'm just going to read a sentence from, which I thought was great. We all have roles and responsibilities inside and outside of the workplace. And that's become more obvious than ever in the pandemic. And it's important. We help to balance the demands hmm. presented to all of us. Mm -hmm. And I just, I thought that was great that they acknowledged and recognized that the world has changed, that all this, these years we've ignored this family responsibility and, you know, sweep it under the rug and don't talk about it. And right. 
it's exciting to see that conversation changing and I hope it continues to change because it just really showed everyone. Yeah. If you have to figure it out yourself and it's between you and your, and your immediate family and your employer. Right. And so the employer became very, very important in that conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. How about you, Mary Bruce? It's incredibly segmented to not consider your employees part of your own family. Um, and to think about it from the mindset of, I am this person's family member, what would I do in their situation? Um, before COVID, the conversation of work-life balance was starting to kind of pick up. Okay, what is reasonable? Because even in that pod, that day off, you're still watching like seven other people's kids and it is not a day off at all. Um, and to have to remote work from that, like is, is compounding interest on mental stress. Every single human has a family. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, when we were, we were all of an age when we were growing up that it was kind of defined to us in storybooks and, and whatever, that it had to be of a certain kind of, of, of situation. But Anybody that interacts with a human, unless you're in complete and total solitary confinement, you have a family and you have responsibilities and you have a duty. That's what enriches your life outside of work. That's what provides uh, insights and, and mind development, social development. Um, and to segment that to where it was production based rather than development based or on a personalized level, we have enough computer systems where we can actually keep up with an, one person's development at work. Um, and how they and how they respond. Um, and it goes hand in hand as they see that the work life balance increases. And then there is a an, a def, like a definitive marker on how they're producing work. And so you're just kind of shooting yourself in the foot or, and serving betters to just say, we got to do it in this time frame. We got to do it with these numbers. And then to finger wag that people have love of living is a major disservice to our entire planet. <laughs> it just doesn't work. We were all getting really really creepy right and then it got creepier with COVID. so now we can like have an opportunity to make the creep like kind of cool right. <laughs> hey mary Bus, you just brought up something that i think is a great point i'm actually happy COVID hit when it did that we have the technologies available hmm. so when i think about the things that my employer did that really enabled the remote work so better we were in the middle of a microsoft teams launch right as COVID started to happen and we hadn't rolled it out to everybody yet and you know, we're a big company, right? We're 25,000 people. So they put more IT staff and put more investment in the technology so that immediately everybody got turned on within like a week or two when it was supposed to be a you know, multi-month rollout. And I think a company investing in the tools, whether it's a cloud-based place like you're talking about where multiple people can work on the development environment mm -hmm. um, and be able to share work or having SharePoint sites or having that, we have the technology, mm -hmm. you know, we can do this and, and combine that with the flexible working hours. And so I saw what my company, the leaders talked about it. The leaders talked about a work day now is not eight to five. A work day is yeah. a 24 hour period. And whenever you get your work done, that's okay. Because we can, we have these tools to see what everybody else is doing and working on. And, and they gave us all permission to do that. And, and so between the, the employer talking about it and giving the permission and then enabling us with the technologies, I think that was just a magic formula that made it easier. It didn't make it go away, but it, it made it easier. Right. Yeah, that's enthusiasm for human intelligence. Like to say that your brain is supposed to function on a certain level between a certain period of time everybody's is supposed to do that. That's not, you're limiting how far your company will go if you're setting the hours in which thought can happen. For sure. Now I'm, I'm interested, Taylor, at Onyx being a manufacturer, you know, a little bit of different game there. What are, what are some of the moves forward that you've, you've seen happen? The cool stuff to, you know, flexibility, enable your people, things like that. Just curious what, what's out there at, at your place. So we are very flexible. Me being in a marketing role, mm -hmm. um, I have to be very creative and you can't be creative nine to five. That's just not mm -hmm. how it works. So it's very awesome to have that flexibility and be able to say, wow, I have this idea and execute it when it's happening rather than saying, oh, let me jot that down and work on it when I get into work on Monday at 9 a.m. It's so much nicer to have the flexibility and to just feel appreciated and trusted. Yeah. 
When are your when are your best hours? I'm just curious. So if it's not nine to five, when when do you get that creative juices flowing? Early morning okay. or super late at night. Oh, okay. Either extreme. I'm actually usually here by six thirty. Okay. And you, you when it's very quiet, our production staff is here at around five thirty or six. Yeah. And the office doesn't normally come in until seven or eight. So I like to come in at six thirty and be creative on my own and silence. It's one of my favorite things. So the flexibility is definitely my favorite thing about the job. That's it. That flexibility and freedom and the and that they recognize that's when you're at your, your peak, right? I mean, so, so let's, let's let people work when they are at their peak. Exactly. How about you, Mary? I'm curious, Mary Bruce, when are you at, when are you at your peak? Is it when you're awake? It seems that's, that's the case. <laughs> No, that's all. What a, what a compliment. No, it's similar to Taylor. It's either extremely early or extremely late. And it's very, very rarely, it's standard operating procedure throughout the middle of the day. Um, and I don't know if that has to do with social interaction and what's required of me if I have to be on, you know, um, but I feel like I can really unleash and let my mind be loose spaghetti noodles all over the floor early and late. And, um, and I appreciate that because it, she's right. The creativity can't happen in a stall. Um, and that's Im important for everything, problem solving from the ground up, even even in your own personal life. Uh, it's incredible to me when people can show up and actually do something that isn't just a system during the middle of the day. I'm pretty moved by the concept of people having different types of family. Uh, I was in an educational role before I got into this, and I have a men a mentee, uh, like a kind of like a kid sister, and um, just trying to get access to different people and how different people live during the day, um, being able to be free and not have to justify a blood relation to someone because we used to have to do that, right? Like we used to have to have the same last name as someone in order for it to be valid enough for you to take time off from work. And that's not that long ago. We're talking about like within the last five years that it's okay for you to, I'm going back to the other one. It's just, it's so profound to me that we had to validate who was important to us by relation. Um, and how that limits the creative process and how that limits where you want to go and where you want to spend your time. So the remote days were really great because you were able to kind of like hop in, do some work and, and get off of it. I don't want to waste anybody's time, including my own. And I don't want to waste anybody's time, even if I'm getting paid to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't, I would rather be not paid and do what I need to do than to be paid to waste your time when I'm not sure. on. And so being able to come and go is incredibly important to the human development of not yet just yourself, but the people that you have access to. And it makes management a whole lot more fun. Nobody wants to sit there and watch someone not do their job. It's a whole lot more fun to say, hey, how about you go take a minute, <laughs> you know? And, and then you look like a hero, right? Like you've released someone from their little position and then they can go do what they need to do and they come back and they're, they're with right. you. I'm back, I'm creative, I'm here. Yeah. You know, I, I got that thing off my chest. I'm able to move past that brain block. Absolutely. Uh, that autonomy is essential. Oh, key word. And that, that's the word we hadn't brought up yet is that autonomy. That my favorite word. is your favorite word. <laughs> that's my favorite word. <laughs> can totally see why. I can totally see it. That's just you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> How about you, Linda? What, when, when are you most creative? We've heard from Taylor and Mary. I'm, I, what, what works for you? Um, cause I have long days cause I support East coast and West coast. Right. Um, I would say mine's more like a sinusoidal wave. Okay. So I can, I can produce for maybe, you know, three, four hours mm -hmm. and then I need a break. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I take a break and clear my mind, go do something else, go do something more. Um, it doesn't take a lot of, you know, thought creative process. Mm -hmm. um, and then it turns back on again. Right. And so for me, every day is different and I'm accustomed to this. I've been doing this for a long time. So I've been flexing to other people's schedules. But I've learned for myself that I would push myself into burnout a lot. And I think that's also a female trait. We have a tendency to take on too much, to push ourselves too far. And between my medical doctor and between my leadership coach, they both would constantly remind me when I would start to get frazzled and anxiety and I couldn't think of the answer, Linda, you're just tired. Just stop. And, and so I think that's an important key thing for women, giving ourselves permission 
that we don't have to be always on all the time because that's kind of a, a, a parental trait, right? That's a mommy trait. When you've got little kids, you've always got to be on all the time. I think society has expected us to always be on all the time and then put us in a, a workplace where it's predominantly male and not as many women. And we feel like we're always having to show that we're the best. And so those layers start to add. And I, I see a lot of my peers that struggle with that. And so anything I could impass on the younger generation, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do that to yourself. You know, I look back in my career and I, I can see many times where I got sick, I got ill, I didn't produce the best work. And it was because I allowed myself to, to work too much and to, to not give myself that break in the middle of the day and go take a 15 minute walk or, you know, go listen to a fun podcast for a few minutes to clear my brain. That's my favorite thing to do now is to pick up one of your podcasts or pick up another podcast and just listen for a few minutes and not have to think. And so having an employer and, and Taylor, I loved your word trust, right? That trust is so important. The, having the trust from the employer mm -hmm. that I trust you that if you take a 15 minute break or a 30 minute break, you're going to go make it up another time that you're right. going to get your work done. That's right. Right. Um, so that's, yeah. Being supportive of self and then having a trustful environment. Right. And then and listening to those, those cues, cause your body's going to give you cues and yes, you either don't suppress it and ignore it, or it's going to stop you eventually. Right. So the, and if, yeah, if you suppress it, it's like leaking out in really <laughs> weird right. ways. Yes. So like, and, and I think that nine to five thing is it. So like, if they tell you, you have to do nine to five, but you know, that seven 30 is your peak hour, then you're working till seven 30. And then you get into burnout because you feel like you didn't do enough during the nine to five. Right. You have to do it at seven 30. And then you just go into a continuous work mm -hmm. mode. And that's not normal for any living thing to do. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Trust is essential. That was a great word. Love also, it. if I can say something else around the flexibility, mm -hmm. I know I'm young and when I first got into the industry, I was very nervous, very quiet. But if there's something that you need, and I'm sure you guys will agree with me, if there's something that you need or that would better your work environment, just ask. I was so nervous to ask for that flexibility to be creative. And even everybody who works around me can see how it's helping me. Mm -hmm. why, why were you nervous? Just because I was new, I, I guess I felt inferior hmm. and since I've had that conversation about trust and freedom and creativity, I've just blossomed. Like everything that I'm creating comes naturally rather than trying to force it. And it also doesn't take as much time. Right. Yeah. When it's not forced and it just comes to you, it doesn't take as much time. You're, well, you're in a zone that stresses off of you and then you, you can focus and, and, and that's when, that's when magic happens for sure. Now I want to, I want to take conversation somewhere a little different and a, somewhat selfish from a dad standpoint, because I, I, I'd love to get your opinion on this. And particularly since I do have a new arrival in our family, she's three months old right now. So it's been a, a real blessing, yeah. but I'd love to get your opinion on things that industry should consider, you know, for the dads that, that want to be involved and want to be present more, you know, any thoughts on that? And, and, and Linda, maybe you can kick us off there on, on, on what's your thoughts on, around that area. Number one, talking about it. There's this historical thing in industry, you know, that, women are the only ones that have babies. Right. <laughs> well, you know, takes two. Right. So, you know, just talking about it, I'd, be, I'd say to start again, as a company, the leaders in the company um, being supportive of that. So mm -hmm. actually one of the things that my employer just did recently, they just sent out an announcement this month that they're actually changing our parental leave policy. And it used to be that your parental leave policy, it was leave unpaid and we could take four weeks leave unpaid. Okay. Um, we've now changed that to, they're giving us two weeks of leave paid. Wow. Whether you're a parent or a spouse or a child. Um, and so that's given a lot of room I've seen with some of my male coworkers that they're so excited. And take it, talk about it. Yeah. You know, talk about how you took the time off. Because like to Taylor's point, when the question comes up, 
and people start talking about it, it gives permission and space for others. Sure. So that, that would be my first advice. The second advice would be if you work for a company that doesn't have that policy, to, to advocate within your company. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened um, at Rockwell is COVID really drove home the need for parental care. And so we started an employee resource group. Um, a bunch of people got together. Think of it as like a club. Okay. You know, when we were in high school, we had clubs. So employee resource groups is where people of like interests or people that support those interests come and join that organization. And we started a parents and caretakers group. And then they went through and they, you know, did their, their combined analysis of, okay, hey, what are our problems? What's our barriers to getting stuff done? They made a list. They put together a business case. They showed it to management. And being able to stay home with new babies and for fathers to be able to support mothers, um, to give them a break, yeah. or whoever the primary, you know, person is at home mm -hmm. with the baby, um, that was one thing they identified. And they advocated. And they went and got it. And so I would encourage those that work for companies that don't have policies like that, find people at work that have your same common interests and, and go advocate for that. Love it. Love it. How about you, Mary Bruce? Mandatory paid time off for dads. Uh, sorry. If you have a new kid, if you're still at work and you're saying, no, I don't need to take time off work. No, sorry. You got to go. <laughs> That's right you have to go take care of your kids sorry because that whole like uh there was a there was a stigma in the fit you know like no we're going to show up for work no matter mm -hmm. what that was instilled in a lot of us as well it doesn't matter your gender that's where we're at um no you have to go be with your baby because that is a normal thing to do not to work constantly and stay away from who is taking care of your kids um my partner has a child it it stinks it stinks wanting to be a part of your of your kid's life and just watching it pass by because like there is no flexibility mm -hmm. Um, if you're on call, just watching it happen, you know, it doesn't matter if your kid has a doctor's appointment, you made it four months ago, you're on call, right? You can't take your kid to the doctor. Are you kidding? No. Um, so having, having the same, the same for female and males of families is important because that is what we're talking about, right? Like that's, it's not okay that, that a mother is able, we're not even able, it's not even a national standard that there is paid time off in the United States. Yeah. Like we're not even on that list, like at all. Somewhere near Russia is the top one. Like that's, are you, that's almost a year and a half off from work paid time off to be with the kids. That, I mean, I can't imagine how that profoundly impacts their, their social development. Um, there's been a ton of studies about how having no time with your parents when you're at least in those first six years is extremely detrimental to, to mental development. These are your future employees. I mean, I hope you think your company is going to last that long. If not, I don't know what you're in business for. And so as you are parents, as you're watching your employees raise children, almost, I mean, I don't have any statistics, but the majority of kids go into the professions that their parents had, especially in trade. Um, and so for you to not assume that this newborn baby will eventually run your company, you're selling your own self short. Like what is, what's, what's your own self-esteem? on what your business is if you're not looking at it like that. Right. I also think it's a little hypocritical. We talk about at work that we work in teams mm -hmm. and that we all need to share the workload mm -hmm. and we need to divide and conquer. But then we say, oh, well, that only applies at work, you know, mm -hmm. not with your family. Yeah. And so if that is your company philosophy, then allow the employee to have that at every place in their life. Right. So I guess I guess we're really talking to the companies here, the the leaders of companies, and yeah. and advocating for support of their employees, no doubt, and then encouraging the employees to speak up. Even I saw it growing up with my own family that there's a stigma behind men missing work. Mm. Yeah, especially with their families. And so for me, I would say just ask for that support. Like you said, when you start to have the conversation, that opens it up for everybody. And right. you will have people that back you up on it. So ask for that paternity leave or for the remote work or some flexibility in your schedule. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I've gone through this three times now. And I think back when my oldest, you know, I was, I was younger in my career, not as probably as confident or, or comfortable with where I was. So I really felt bad asking for that time off. And I think I took a week when she was born. And I remember the day going back was like one of the worst days of my life. I mean, it, I was sobbing. Oh. I was sobbing the whole way in the truck, you know, driving to wherever I went. It was a bad day. And then my second daughter, it was a week. 
but with with Lily, the the you know things have changed a lot. I've I've, I've grown and matured, gotten a little more comfortable with uh, just go, you know for to Linda your point, advocating and and going for the ass. So it's just like look, minimum two weeks. I'm I'm out. I'm checking out. I'm not checking email. You can send them. I'm not going to check them. You know because like I'm changing. I think I even put in my out of office. I'm not going to respond. I'm either helping the white I'm, I'm either uh, feeding a baby changing changing a diaper or going or going outside for some quiet time <laughs> you know i, I, I put oh. something funny like that in the out office right so people would just know hey this is this, you're not getting chris right now so you know just just having that voice i don't know it's just for the dads out there that may be listening stand up right and, and ask for yeah. it i think that was great advice on the two and having elders do it lead by example mm -hmm. so like if you i mean think of, it took you three kids for you to feel like you could ask for time for with your human child you know and like that's and that it, the autonomy is missing and stating our needs is missing and um we need to be able to teach our kids that we need them to see that even that early it goes by osmosis that's right that yeah one of the other benefits uh that rockwell worked on again this came out of that employee resource group the, the parents and caretakers group was they said, you know, for those of us that don't live near families, we have trouble finding babysitters. And so part of our benefits package now, we get health care and dental care, but then we also have a partnership and reduced um, fees through um, a caretaking company. So if you need to hire a babysitter, if you need to hire someone to go help take your kids somewhere, um, I don't remember the name of the company, but th there's companies out there that do this now. It's, it's kind of like, the you know go and, and find a babysitter online so it's crowdsourcing right um so that's part of our benefits now is that if you need to find someone to help care for your child you can tap into this company and we have a corporate discount so it's it's creating that conversation in that place where we acknowledge everybody needs to find support for families men and women got that right and and men yeah. shouldn't be and uh, taylor i love the fact you brought up men being shamed you're right men for years were shamed against caretaking where women were shamed for doing it. I mean, how crazy is that? Right? Like it's, it's neither one is healthy. Right. Catch 22. And it creates a un, unhealthy default parent situations where you've got one parent because one person's work is more able to be flexible than the other. It creates an unwork, unfair workload on one parent. Mm -hmm. Any kind of childcare on site reduces the amount of bandwidth that you're removing for your from your employee um and that's an incredible asset for folks as well as on-site health care uh even if it's just private rooms we talked about you know lactation rooms were something that was discussed a long time ago mm -hmm. but even private rooms where you can take your laptop and have your virtual mental health check with your third-party therapist because we don't need to have like a company sponsored therapist that sounds like a a bad, a bad way to kind of just get a whole bunch of brainwashed people. But like, it, it's important to have small rooms where you can go and have a moment of human caretaking to go do those things in the middle of a workday, especially in those plant-based situations where you're in an entire factory, you have to leave a campus, mm -hmm. um, things like that. So those are good. To have. I'm curious, more, keep the ideas coming. So you're speaking to the industry leaders out there, right? You know, I mean, we're trying to attract women. <laughs> We're trying to, to, to bring, to bring more here. These are, there were two phenomenal ideas. Any others that, that you can think of? I mean, Taylor, you got anything that's, that's ruminating that you want to jump in on? Yes. So when I had my first manufacturing internship, mm -hmm. there was only one women's restroom on the plant floor and it was completely at the other side of the plant from where I was stationed. And as crazy as it may sound, do you have women's restrooms on the plant floor? Yeah. Wow, that's a good one. Wow. Go watch the movie Hidden Figures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yes. And how yeah. she had to trek across campus to go to the restroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a real thing. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. We have to have that conversation, right? I mean, it's it's crazy that we're having that right now, but it's a thing for right. sure. And that was only three years ago, right? for those in the plant floor environment, um, I needed to buy some new steel toe shoes. Mm -hmm. And I know for years I would go with my coworkers to plant environments and, you know, they would have nice business dress shoes that were steel toes. 
And the men were never questioned, were they wearing steel toes? Um, now there's women's companies out there that have steel toe shoes like Xena wear, and they look like nice dress shoes. Um, but I get questioned, are they steel toes? And so, you know, just doing an education in your environment mm -hmm. of what the proper shoes look like. And, and this kind of goes more to just the, to Taylor's point of making a fair, you know, environment for women in, in industrial manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Um, but something as little as that, you know, a woman being asked five, six times a day, well, are those really still toes? You know, that's microaggressions and they're like little paper cuts and it adds up over time. Yeah. And so I, I speak to the EH and S departments out there. Mm. When you post the sign in your break room of go buy these work boots, please post a sign of Xena wear as well. So people are aware that there are now women's dress shoes that look nice that are still toe. And I don't have to wear the big clunky boots anymore. And beyond that, it's just a system of control. The, the reality is, is my, I chopped my foot off and you said I should wear steel toed shoes and I did not. And my foot is not covered. Like, like, do you, do you, are you going to step on my foot to make sure? Like, is that the, is that where we're going with this? The, the need for it, so it goes back to Taylor's point of trust. Like, we are all adults and either you want me to be an adult in my career or you want to treat me like I'm still in third grade. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, you're telling me how much of an investment you think I actually am, how much do you think I can actually produce if you step on my shoe to make sure I'm following the rules. Okay. We can, we can play that game right. too, but it does something to that relationship. And it's not one of development. It's one of control. Right. Yeah. And it sounds like that, that company you mentioned, Linda is definitely a leading edge. It sounds like they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're taking a, a really good stance that support women and, in, in in industry. So any other businesses that jump out that, that you ladies would like to give some recognition to where you see the doing the really the good things? My company's doing great. <laughs> I can speak for that. That's a, yeah. <laughs> My, yeah. So I work for a small family business uh, who has watched, I mean, they, they became a small family business by working in the industry and not finding a way to make their own family. They said, you know what, break the system, we'll make our own. And I appreciate that about them. And so even in their own company, it's the three of us, but they're everywhere we go, it's advocacy, advocacy. And it's coming from a male and it's coming from a female and it's coming from me as an employee. How do I, how do I get to be able to make my life function? Um, am I able to help my brother with his kid? Yes. Am I able to do the things that I need to do? Am I able to do civil service? Yes. Um, am I still able to get my work done? Absolutely. Can I do that on my own schedule? Absolutely. Um, and I have fun at my job. Like there's, it's limitless interest because I'm not feeling pulled in a thousand directions. So at 36, I'm able to actually think about having a family. 36 is this delayed, but it's not, not happening. So this is the first time I've interacted with that, that autonomy where you can actually decide and you can see that. Um, some of the plants that we go in, I hear my boss saying out loud, no, this is how we do it. And you guys should consider it too. Um, trying to just, we don't have to do these things that are still happening. Mm -hmm. We can change it. I, I, I love it. And for the listeners that don't know TW Controls and Tim and Amber and what they've built, uh, check out the show notes. Go go follow YouTube. Uh, you'll find Mary Bruce out there as well on a lot of on a lot of those videos. But it's just I can only imagine the amount of fun you all have up there. <laughs> we do. <laughs> And, you know, they, they, they're raising two kids. They've been able to do it. Uh, they were they were building a family right when they were building that company. Yeah. So they've really been able to tailor yeah. make it. It's a pretty cool story when he said, like, wasn't she pregnant? And they both quit their jobs. Like, Six yeah. Six months yeah. pregnant. Like, bro, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. So. It's, it's good. And that's that's the thing that we need to know is that, like, when you're when you're considering your family and your job, there's always going to be an industry in which will value you. And so your family is the, that's the only shot you got at building your own team. That's it. And so if you find yourself having to question which one is more important, you know the answer already. And it's not, I don't care how big your paycheck is. It's not. Your yeah, for sure. I think that's super important. You will find a company. You will find somewhere that values mm -hmm. your family time and that values everything that you value. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And value is not having to have a replacement for you, like not trying to find a replacement for what you bring mm -hmm. to the table. Correct. And, and as I know for a fact, Onyx Taylor, very high, very supportive of families and women. So do any others jump out to you? 
Not necessarily, only because I feel like I haven't been in the industry okay. for a long time. And I did join I did join the workforce like in the middle of COVID. So I guess I haven't really gotten to experience much. Right. Well, I get that. With but the- it's definitely something that I look for yeah. when I go out and I tour these plants. I look for things like we have, like we have a nursing room with a fridge and we have those women's restrooms on the plant floor. Yeah. So important. Linda, anything before we jump into our lightning round that you want to offer here? No, let's jump in the All lightning right. round. Let's, let's jump in the lightning round. You'll kick us off. So we got, I got three questions. And so Linda and Mary are used to it. So Taylor, this is new to you. Lightning rounds are fun. So no pressure. Uh, but I just want to bounce around an idea on a couple of topics to you all and get your feedback. So Linda, kick us off. Then we'll go to you, Taylor, and then you, Mary Bruce, and we'll just keep the, the cadence going like that. Is that cool? All mm-hmm. right. So yep. Linda, get us going. Uh, favorite supportive action that you've seen to support industry and families? Again, the paid parental leave. Mm-hmm. Um, Mary Bruce said it. We in the United States, we are the worst country for maternity leave. Canada gives women a year paid leave. And United States gives nothing. Mm-hmm. So I think the best thing my company did was giving us the the paid leave. And I wish more companies would do that. And I also wish that those of us that are in politics would advocate to our government to change it. For sure. For sure. Taylor? So for me, I really think it's um, leaders showing that family time is valuable. Mm-hmm. So, for example, when I had first started at Onyx, my family came up to visit me and we gave them a plant tour. My family walked through here and got to see where I was working. Right. And that just showed how important family is. So I think that showing the value of family and how important it is to have a good relationship with your people outside of work also helps build what you're doing inside of work. For sure. For sure. Mary Bruce. Culture of empathy. Building a culture of empathy is incredibly important. We can get a machine to do anything that we want, but you have a human doing something on purpose and you have to treat them like humans. If you want them to maintain that, right. if you want them to maintain that as the culture of empathy. So important that so important and culture can says a lot about a company for sure. So uh, Linda, uh, best memory you have in regards to, you know, when combining your family, your career, just looking back, any, any memory stand out? I love to volunteer and, and to support young children. Cause again, I don't, I don't have my, my own kids, my young kids that I raised. So I've done a lot of volunteering with first robotics and the company giving me time and supporting me to do that. And then also watching my coworkers that their kids participate in first robotics. And the company says like, go, go, you know, you don't even have to take time off, go, go participate in that, create the next generation of technologists. We support you in doing that. Um, volunteering with first is some of my funnest memories because it's just it's so exciting to see the young generation get excited about technology yes no doubt you'll you'll like it when you have to listen to the panel where we had mary bragoon because she that she oh, really, yeah. she talked a lot about yeah, first, <laughs> first robotics in this in her panel and uh so that's coming out as well as part of it so absolutely how about you taylor So, Linda, I share a very similar passion. I love speaking to the younger generation about how to choose a career path. Mm -hmm. And Ashley and everyone in my company has been super supportive of that. They're always looking for places for me to go speak, not even just about Onyx, but about how to find yourself and how to find what industry you would best serve and where you would be happiest Mm -hmm. and where your values align. So I think that's one of my favorite things is the support that I get for my passion. Love it. Love it. Mary Bruce, any good memories? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, So I grew up in a manufacturing town. I was on two interstates. We were surrounded by factories. All of my friends growing up, we were all factory children and uh, growing up and becoming a factory human. It, I remember company Christmas parties. I know that parties are iffy with COVID, but but it was fun to see these companies come together and make these parties actually kid focused. Yeah. Um, and and whatever the holiday it may be, but they all of these people, management uh, from the ground up, were able to see each other's families and actually relate on a human level. Nobody's family is more important than anybody else's. Doesn't matter if you run the company or or if you just got here a week ago. Right. Um, 
they're all important. And that, that was kind of great that everybody kind of lifted that up for a moment in solidarity. We need more of that. I mean, I, I'm just thinking through just the way uh, Christmas parties are, things like that, holiday parties throughout the year at, at companies. It's, it's all about the employees. But, yeah, let's open it up. I mean, come on. It's a fun, good opportunity. We're learning team loyalty. Yeah. Like, it, I think Linda was talking about, I, if I see someone participating in their family, that means that they are loyal to their team. That means that they will be loyal to my team, too, if I, cre if I create an environment in which they'll want right. to stay. Right, right. Love it. Sorry, I'm No, you're good. You're good. So last last part of the lightning round, Linda. Uh, most inspirational okay. leader that you suggest people to follow out there. Okay, I'll do a new I, I always talk about Gary John Bishop, but I mentioned that one on our last podcast. I'm actually gonna mention um a friend of mine at Disney. Her name is Rachel Hutter. Okay. And she has been posting um, after COVID, she decided to start sharing more of her leadership knowledge. She's an executive at Disney on LinkedIn. And I just, I love following Rachel. She always has just this great little tidbits and these great little insights about leadership and, and also just kind of giving the view from her seat. I mean, mm -hmm. she's responsible for thousands of people and she has huge responsibility and just kind of peeking into what a day in a life is like for her. Um, I, I've just loved following her recently. Love so Rachel it. Hutter, um, H-U-T-T-E-R on LinkedIn. Absolutely. And we'll make sure that's in the show notes for the listeners out there so you can go directly and, and, and follow there. So how about you, Taylor? So obviously industry related, I would say Ashley. Yes, yes, yes. I set, <laughs> I set you up for that one. <laughs> I know. She's always posting great inspirational things yeah. for other leaders, especially in our manufacturing industry. But personally, I think if you're like me and you're looking for personal development, uh -huh. inspiration and growth, a poet, Rupi Kaur. Okay. She's great. She's always posting poems from her books and they're so inspirational and they just make you feel like you're, you're meant to be you. Yeah. So I think that that would be mine. Very cool. Very cool. How about you, Mary Bruce? Uh, I'm super into Ram Dass, which is an old school yogi person, but just talking about like the human existence and connecting to self. It's really hard to be a human for other people if you can't be a human for yourself. Um, as far as listening to people in the in the industry is listening to my peers, people that I interact with, like Chris and who Chris interacts mm -hmm. with. Who does Chris interact with? Who does Linda interact with? Who does Taylor interact with? Being open to a lot of different voices, I think, is a really great way to kind of get yourself to be well-rounded on all of those themes. I love it. Love it. Well, this has been a very impactful conversation. I think you ladies have, have brought a ton of insight, wisdom, knowledge, inspiration out there for, for all the listeners. You know we call it Eco Ask Why, so we'll go uh, the last round will be the the why, you know, why is this important to you in regards to women and, and industry and families and from your from your position. So uh, we started with Linda. So let's Linda, why don't you kick us off here with, with, with your why? My why, it's not just about the women. It's about the men, too. We want an inclusive environment for all employees. Mm -hmm. So it's it's about everybody. That's my why of why I'm here. Love it. Love it. Taylor. I think my why is because I accepted this job and I didn't realize at the time that I was working for such a great company. And now that I see other companies aren't always like mine, mm -hmm. that I think my why is really just showing people that you can have these conversations and you can grow and you can change. Company culture can change. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mary Bruce. It excites me to know that Ty Taylor just entered into a good work environment. Like if you can make it through the rest of your career and not have to interact with some of this stuff. And, but you're right. You, you wish it into existence. It's not there unless you start advocating for it. Um, my why is that if we don't have industries unless we have families. Like it, it, none of it exists unless we have families. So it, it's all cyclical. If we don't support our families, we don't have an industry at all because that's not a family anymore either. Absolutely. Well, this, this has been phenomenal. Ladies, thank you so much for taking the time with us. For the listeners out there that want to connect and follow, you know, Mary Bruce and, and Linda and Taylor, check out the show notes. We'll have ways to, 
to follow the, on LinkedIn and, and check out the awesome things that are happening at their companies. I definitely need to follow TW Controls because I think, what do you produce, like two videos a week or something? It's crazy how much content you guys are putting out. It's unbelievable. There, there's a calendar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's definitely a process. It's very routine. Yeah. <laughs> how yeah. many followers is it now? Like 30-something thousand out there? An absurd amount. Yeah, a lot. It's it's bizarre. That's crazy. It's, it... uh, it's, it's great. Education's important, right? We we just want everybody to have the information that they need to do your job That's at right. work, right? And to do good, do a good job. That's at home. right. And I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity for you just helping provide that space for these conversations. Absolutely. It, 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 yes, it, thank you. It is, it is our pleasure. We're looking forward to this and, and for what it can do. I know my girls are excited to to listen to these episodes and to watch them because they, they're all about the YouTube, watching them on YouTube now. So thank you, ladies, so much for taking your time today. I definitely value your input, your insight, and your wisdom. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank, Thank you. You as well. What a great conversation. I tell you what, the feedback from Mary Bruce, from Taylor, from Linda, unbelievable. Talk about, you know, being an advocate, you know, evening out the playing field, but there's still a lot of work to be done. So a lot of impactful conversation and thoughts there. So thank you so much for for listening. Check out the show notes again. There are a lot of resources they, that, that were mentioned and they'll be right there for you to check out. Now in the war stories, keep them coming. We want, we, we're getting the good stuff, the bad stuff, the ugly stuff and the fun stuff. So the stuff you're sitting around talking at the dinner table and bring up at cocktail parties, that's what we want to hear. So check out the show notes. You can get those directly to us there. And if you like Eco Ask Why, Give us that five-star rating. Write a one-sentence review. It makes all the difference in the world. And more importantly, share it with someone that you, that you think would find value. You know, it's, it's, send them a text. You can text it right there. Hey, check out this podcast. It brings me a lot of, of, of fun and, and insight and value. So do that. And remember, keep asking why.